Hello and welcome to my first video tutorial. Today I'm going to explain how to use PuTTY to connect to a remote server efficiently with keys that automatically log in. And I'll teach a little bit about X11 tunneling, a little bit about keyboard mapping, and how to prevent your session from timing out automatically. So the first thing that I want to cover is Porta Putty. This is a portable version of Putty that you can install on any USB flash drive. Unfortunately, there's a lot of viruses out there that I found while trying to get the actual version of Porta Putty. So I'm going to show you the actual site that has it. It's called Socialist Sushi and it can be found by Googling Porta Putty. I want to get the binaries. So I'm just going to download the zip file. Perm automatically saves it to my downloads folder. I'm using Windows 7 Ultimate, although any version of Windows 7 should be fairly similar. I'm going to extract Porta Putty using 7-zip. Um, you can use anything that you want to extract the zip file. Windows has built-in functionality. They can do it just fine. And I'm going to drag that to the desktop. Next, I'm going to open up PuTTY. So here's PuTTY, the default boring screen, and I'm going to log into a server that I've set an account up for just for this tutorial, my name or username at the server. And I'm just going to connect and notice that we need to verify the host name because it's not cached. This is a safety feature to tell you if the server has been hijacked or something. So I'm just going to say yes because this is my first time. And I'm going to log into the server using my password. Now I want to log into the server using no password. There's a couple of ways of doing this. And the first way I'm going to show is how to use an open SSH generated key with PuTTY. So the first tip is SSH keygen hyphen key RSA. This generates a key pair and accepting the defaults will work fine. The passphrase, remember, should not be um, specified unless you want additional security on your key file. Most admins create a key file to get away from having ten or a password to log into a server. So now if we see the into our .ssh directory under our home directory, remember the tilde stands for home, and do an ls, there's two files. The .pub stands for public, and that's your public key that you're going to give to other servers, and idrsa is your private key, which you're going to hold on to and not share with anyone. So typically, if you want the server to be able to allow logins remotely, you need to make your you need to paste your public key into a file called authorized keys, or as OpenSSH nowadays does, it's authorized keys too. So I'm just going to rename the file to authorized keys two, and hit enter. So. Now, as you can see, the file was renamed. Authorized Keys 2 now works. And if we do a more on that file, you'll see that there's an actual key in there. Um, just a note that that key does not exist after this tutorial, so it won't work for you if you tried to log in as me. Next, the IDRSA file contains our private key and I'm just going to vim so that you can see what the private key might look like and it's RSA encrypted not really much to it but what we do want to do is copy this so I'm just going to use putty's highlight to copy something here clipboard and right click to paste now I'm going to exit out of Vim, which is the best text editor in the world, if you ask me, but you might like Emacs or something else. Now I'm just going to create a simple new text document on my desktop. 
I'm not even going to bother renaming it at this point. I'm just going to paste the key in. Next, I'm going to hit enter once because Putty, for some reason, when it's importing SSH keys from OpenSSH, it looks for a new line character at the end. So I'm just going to save this, get out of the file. Then there's something called Putty Gen. And this is a key generator for Putty. We aren't actually going to generate a key though, we're just going to convert it into a Putty key. So I'm going to go to Conversions and Import Key. I'm going to highlight the new text document and open it. Notice how nice this is. It gives me the public key that I can paste to any server and then it knows how to use the key. So for Putty, I just want to save the private key file of this. So I'm just going to click on Save Private Key. And I don't really care about protecting it with a password because I'm fairly secure. I want the key to be able to allow me to log in without a password. So I'm just going to click Yes. And I'll save it to my desktop. Notice how desktop is there. And I'm just going to call this Fill Key Short. So just give it a semi-descriptive name. And notice how it has the cool putty hat on it. And for now, I'm just going to get out of the key generator. And I'm also going to log out of short for this time being. I'll go into putty and blank window again. And I'm going to type in fill it short at madhouse.us, which is my name. And then, well, my username at server. And now I'm going to show you a couple cool things about Putty that you may have not known. If you click on connection, see the keep alive option? I usually set that to 30 just because I don't want the session dying out if I leave my computer for a couple of minutes. And the admin of the server specifies a really ultra low time to keep you from having your session open and vulnerable to somebody sitting at your computer and getting access to your stuff. So 30 seconds is good. And that this here means it will ping the server every 30 seconds and simulate that we're still sitting at our computer and still using the server. This is useful for those long downloads or something like that. Now, if I go to auth, you see the private key file for authentication. I'm just going to browse, go to the desktop, click on fill key short, and now the keys imported and are ready for Putty to use to connect to the server. Just as a quick mention, if you have X11, that will allow you to use things like Firefox remotely or stuff like that. I'll get to that shortly, but that's what that's for. Tunnels, I wrote a blog on a long time ago. I don't even know if it exists, but there's a way to create a proxy server through Putty, if you know what those are. And basically, you can forward all of your traffic through the SSH tunnel, thus making yourself appear like you're on the server. And believe me, I use that quite often. And finally, I'm going to come back to keyboard, just to mention that on some FreeBSD systems, if you select the VT100 Plus option, your keyboard's backspace will work properly instead of requiring Control H. And if you type the Control H here, that'll also help you a little bit with making FreeBSD systems actually work a little bit better because they don't by default when you connect to them. I've never had a problem with CentOS or Red Hat or Ubuntu for that matter, but for some reason FreeBSD always has to be a little different. So finally I'm going to save this session as fill at short. And now if I just double click fill at short here, Notice how it logged me in automatically. Isn't that wonderful? So now I don't even have to type in a password to gain access to my server and gain access to all the wonderful stuff that comes from it. So the next step that I want to do is completely take a back step for a minute and use Putty to generate the key instead. So for now, I'm just going to cd into the SSH directory. I'm going to vim 
the authorized keys to file and I'm going to go to the end of line and add a new line there. Um, we'll come back to this in a second, but we'll go back into Putty Gen. And we're just going to generate a key. All you have to do is move your mouse randomly over the area and it randomly generates a key. Pretty easy, right? So I'm going to save the private key. Once again, without a password, is key short fill two or something that's somewhat descriptive. Notice how it showed up on the desktop. Then notice here, we can just copy paste the key and we can put it into the server. So authorized keys to now has the key that Putty provided us. I'm just going to do escape colon WQ to write the changes out to the file and quit them. And now I can use key short two or key short in order to get into the server to demonstrate how this works. I'll go back into putty. Give me a moment, please. So I go into putty. I'll load this. I'll go back to off. And this time I will choose the second key. I'll go back up to session. I'm just going to open it. There you go. I logged in automatically. Just remember that you need an authorized keys to file in order to connect. Um, through OpenSSH, if you just generate the file using the SSH keygen command and copy and paste that to a remote system, it will let you log in to the remote system provided your public key is an authorized keys file. And it works excellent for commands like SCP, which securely copy files between servers. If you have backup jobs, for example, like I do, your backup jobs won't ask for a password, so SCP can send your backup over the internet in a secure fashion. And now for the final bit, I want to quickly show how X10 works. So. I have a program called Xming that's installed on my laptop here. So it's in a directory different from what is by default. I like keeping my system organized and clean, as you can probably tell. So I'm just going to start up Xming. And once Xming is running, I'm going to log into a server that I know for a fact has Firefox installed on it. And that would be my buffalo.edu account on Nickelback. And this is a server ran by the CSE department at the university. And basically, I'm just going to connect normally and I'm going to type in my password because I don't really use keys on university systems because I have no real need to. But if you notice, I probably made a quick mistake, so let me go back and correct myself. So I'll retype in nickelback.cse.buffalo.edu. And I'm going to come down to the X11 option, and I'm just going to tick this enable X11 forwarding. And then I'll connect and I'll type in my password again, which will let me in. X11 is now enabled. So what does this mean? If I type in something like Firefox and I put in the ampersand, meaning keep the process alive and go back to the terminal, Firefox now will begin loading on the remote system. And notice how whizmyip.com shows me as Nickelback's IP address is where if I were to open up a local browser, type in whatismyip.com, it shows my local IP. So two different IP addresses. Both of these computers are fairly heavily firewalled, so it's not like you're really going to do much to me if you tried to attack me, which is why I'm giving you the IP addresses. Probably not the best thing to do, but we have good firewalls. So I'm going to just log off from Nickelback for now. And that's it for this um, first video that Famous Phil has. Um, she can tell I use Camtasia. So 
other than that, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm always open to feedback, stuff like that. So, have a great night.